sessions on uh, the online claims platform, OCP, and are going to be kicked off by Phil. Phil, go to it. Yeah, th thank you. Um, wait a second for my slides, but just to introduce my myself, I'm Phil Guillory. I'm the Supply Chain Integrity De Director for FSC International. Uh, and over the last three years, have been working on a project uh, in our chain of custody system that we'll be talking to you about today. Um, seems like we have the slides. So what, and many of you, I imagine, um, here have heard about the online claims platform. Uh, many of you probably haven't heard about the online claims platform. So we're excited today to introduce uh, uh, the online claims platform uh, internet platform the FSC is developing uh, for the FSC chain of custody system. Uh, we're happy to announce the beta version, the beta release of this platform um, today, uh, and we'll be talking to you about uh, the online claims platform. Tim Wilson of Historic Futures is uh, here, uh, our partner in this project, who will be giving a demonstration of the beta version. Uh, Jacob Riding and Chris Cox are two, uh, represent two organizations that have been testing the online claims platform um, uh, over the, uh, the last six months and are going to uh, provide a perspective on their view of what we are working to develop. Um, much of what we've talked about over the last two days is the FSC and the importance of responsible forestry and the focus on the forests and making sure uh, we, uh, responsible forestry is performed on the ground. And, but one of the things is I've been involved in the FSC for pretty, pretty close to its inception. I'm a forester by training. I worked in, in tropical forests. And what, what, uh, what attracted me to FSC was just that, doing responsible forestry that really recognized indigenous people's rights, communities, looked at, th uh, looked at biodiversity, uh, the three chamber balance system, all those things that I think are really important to everyone here in th this room as well. One of the things that um, was interesting to me was the whole idea of, okay, you can do responsible forestry, but how do you make sure someone very far down the supply chain can know that that product's originating from, from, um, from that forest? And that's why FSC developed the, uh, developed the FSC chain of custody system. Um, so, and when... 20 years ago, FSC really was the first to, to basically um, have the idea of the chain of custody system. Many people felt, boy, that was a, that's a huge step. That's a big, uh, big step to, to implement into a system. Um, can FSC do that? Well, we've, we've been very successful. We've, we've, we've had the uh, chain of custody system in place. It's working. It's functioning. But one of the things is the, the FSC chain of custody system um, has been around for... For, for many years, FSC has changed Im immensely and, and in, a, in, many, in many good ways. We have 27,000 certificate holders, over 40,000 organizations trading FSC products out there in the marketplace. We have 35 certification bodies who are working to, to, uh, um, to uh, basically audit to, those, to our standards. Um, that's all exciting news. But one of the things is our chain of custody system um, needs to, uh, to evolve as well as we move forward. Um, and for many reasons. One is because of our growth and, we, and being, uh, being in many, many countries in the world. Another reason is because um, technology has changed. 20 years ago, what we could never have imagined uh, what technology has done since the last two years. You know, to imagine things like Facebook, LinkedIn, social networks, Twitter, uh, doing things like this 20 years ago, it was not even in anybody's, anybody's thoughts. But also another thing is that consumers and companies have also started, I think, you know, partly because of the technology, starting to demand more from us, in, especially in these areas of chain and custody. They are no longer satisfied. People want to know that, you know, they, when we make claims in the marketplace, they want to know that those claims are accurate, and they, they are concerned when they're not. Uh, many people here in Europe, you know, know about the case of horse meat showing up uh, as as beef, and, and people being very upset about that because the claim on those products was not accurate. So we uh, in the FSC have uh, realized that we need to be leaders uh, within, 
within our, our area. We need to innovate. We need to be, um, um, we, um, we, we need to have continuous improvement in what we do. And so what we're doing is, over the last three years is developing uh, a platform for helping the chain of custody systems. Um, and we have designed this platform with uh, input from certificate holders, from our, from our members, and really working to design it so it can function across our whole network of 27,000 organizations and really strengthen the whole FSC system. Um, so the idea is that we can, when products are traded and when they go down through the supply chain, those claims are accurate as they are passed through, th through the process um, in the system. Um, so we, we see that the, the online claims platform is a way to really improve the integrity of the FSC system, continue to be a leader in, in the certification world. Um, so, so one of the things is what will we be doing next? What, how will this work? And how is the, this online claims platform going to perform? And again, Tim will go through the details and give you a much better idea of what it is. But just shortly is we're going to go through certificate holders and others who subscribe to the online claim platform will go through three, um, three steps in the process. The first step is they'll register. The, uh, the online claim platform will require um, our organizations to actually register and confirm the data that we have on them. Very easy step, one step process to do that. Um, the second step is, um, is something that we are calling a connecting. And this is very much uh, just like social networks. So when products are traded, when a customer, uh, when a customer receives a FSC product, um, we, will, we will ask them to connect over the, internet, uh, over the online claims platform to their, to their supplier, just like uh, social networks, just like face, Facebook, just like LinkedIn. It will say, you need to go into, the, go into the online claims platform, identify your supplier, make sure they have a valid certificate, and connect with them and link with them so we can confirm that 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 trade is actually coming from a legitimate FSC certified operation. And then the last step, and again, um, Tim is going to demonstrate this and, and talk about this, is it's actually you then um, enter claims. So when you receive a, a claim from your supplier as a customer, you, could, you would enter it into the platform, and then a message is sent to your supplier to confirm and say, uh, confirm that that is actually what was traded. So we can actually m tighten the FSC chain of custody system as we move forward. One of the things that we think is really exciting about the online claims platform is it's not only for certificate holders, but we really want to work farther down into the supply chain to the retailers and others who do not, uh, at this point, are required FSC uh, chain of custody certification. We think this will be a valuable tool for them to show, uh, to, d to demonstrate claims are accurate, but also to pass on information that will be really important for them uh, and valuable for them on, on, on the way they do business. So that's, again, I just, I didn't, I wanted to uh, basically set the table and uh, explain what it is in, in very broad terms and give uh, Tim a chance to actually show you uh, how it works, how it functions, and some of the details of, of what it will do. Uh, so, Tim, I think we can uh, pass it over to you, pass it over to you. Very good. Thank you, Phil. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a software demo. Just focus on the ice cream. You're nearly at the ice cream. That'll keep you going. So, I know watching software is about as interesting as watching paint dry, but there is a little free sense of excitement here, and that is that most of what you've watched so far has been PowerPoint presentations. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to do a live demonstration of an internet system. And those of you who are subject to the gods of the internet, as most of us are for, the, for our work now, know how cruel they can be sometimes. So in the event that any of this doesn't work, I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to entertain you with my moonwalking. I can't believe I just said that. Uh, my moonwalking really isn't very good. So, uh, uh, thank you Tobias for helping me out here. The other thing is, by the way, I don't speak Mac. I know it's hard to believe that someone as young and cool as me doesn't use a Mac. 
um, but I don't speak Mac. Not only do I not speak Mac, but it's in foreign. It's in, it's in Danish. Um, so the keys are not in the same places. Other than that, bear with me. Okay, so, uh, and I could still fall down the steps. Um, so here we are, we're at, um, we're at the test channel of the OCP. So it's important to re recognize that we're still working on the online claims platform. I have a team back in the UK who are doing that. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever written software or been involved in writing software. A show of hands, anyone written software? Good, so you probably know a little bit about what I'm going through here. Uh, we are still working on it. We will continue to work on it. We have a team that's going to, the idea is it's, much as most of these things are, it's not going to get stuck and baked. It'll, we, will we have a, a development team that's set up to work on this for the foreseeable future. So we will take input from people and we'll improve it and, and, uh, as, as we learn more as we go along. Um, so this is a, a test channel. We've put the current version of the code into a test channel and, which allows us to play around. I should stress that all of the data in here is made up. It's all junk data. And this system isn't yet connected to the live data at info.fsc.org. So clearly the plan is that we will connect up the online claims platform. The connector's built, uh, just it's not in this test channel, so that we will be able to type in certificate numbers and it will run off and collect the information from info.fsc.org. Um, Okay, so, unsurprisingly, I need to log in. Uh, <laughs> bear with me. Ah, well, that's the first bit. Good. <laughs> It's always helpful when it, when it does actually log you in. Okay, so it, it, when we actually launch the thing for real, um, and as Phil just said, we're, we're just opening a private beta at the moment, so it's for invited companies. If you would like to get involved, then please do get in touch with Phil or Emily. Uh, we're building a list. We want, to get the, we want to get a selection of different sorts of uh, certificate holders to have a go um, and interact with each other on the online claims platform. Um, by the time we get to launching version one, which will be um, January 2014, um, then there'll be some, it'll look a little bit different, certainly on the way in, in terms of uh, the, the login screen. Okay, so let's just have a quick look around the screen. I logged in with my email address, fscotp plus one at gmail.com. We've set it up using Gmail for this case, in case I need to look at the email notifications that are going around. Um, so I can do things, so if you look up here, that's me. And if I click on that, uh, you can see uh, this is test data, as I said. So you can see I'm currently Edward Jenner, um, not Tim Wilson. Um, and we could get some more interesting users, I think, as we go through. Uh, you can see this is my email address. I can log in. I can change it. I can do things like I can change the language into Chinese. And ah, magic. And it's all gone into Chinese. Uh, the trick with this, by the way, is to remember how you turn it into Chinese, because I've no idea what the Chinese for uh, select language is. Um, so, fortunately, I can remember it's just there. But the, the important thing to recognize here is that we've built it such that we can uh, crowdsource, inverted commas, the language translation. So we've built OCP such that we can have it in as many languages as we need. Um, and we can create a language file. We can use some of the resources in the FSC network so that if there is a national office in Slovenia and we want it in Slovenian or in Thailand and we want it in Thai or whatever, then so long as someone's prepared to do the, do the translation to the language file, then we can turn it into that language, into that local language very quickly and easily. Okay, let's go back to English because that's more comfortable for me anyway. <coughs> okay. Um, one of the things I'm not going to look at too much in detail here, but you'll see down the bottom here it says SSP details. SSP stands for Spreadsheet Processor. So there are a number of ways of getting data into the online claims platform. We can type it in, and that will work well for people who have a relatively small number of claims. Um, for those who have rather more than that, we can uh, put all the information into a spreadsheet and then send it to a, an email Dropbox. Or we can either upload it directly into the browser from here, which I'll show you in just a moment, um, or we can, every online claims uh, platform account will have its own unique email address that it can mail Excel spreadsheets to. Now, the reason we do that, and I have a lot of experience from my background at Historic Futures of working in supply chains all over the world, 
There are factories that have poor internet connections. There are factories that have poor internet connections and limited access to computers. So they have a computer, but it's being used for lots of things all day, every day. Uh, and so to say, can I have half an hour, please, sitting on it to sit and type some stuff in, um, may not be that convenient. Whereas you can say, can I just send a quick email? I've got the Excel here. I just need to send a quick email. And the advantage with email clients is that they'll chat to each other. So the email client will keep trying to send that email until the server says, I've got it. And then the, the OCP will process the Excel spreadsheet that was sent in the email. OK, so here we have the next thing I'm going to look at just very quickly is this notification screen. Uh, we're going to do some more formatting on this. But the important thing with notifications, again, it's a bit like uh, the social networks, the LinkedIn, the Facebooks, the Twitters that you've seen. We can push these notifications out through email, through a number of no notification channels. So you could have it coming in on Twitter if you wanted to. Um, and these are a number of things. So that when, uh, when someone requests to connect to your OCP account, you'll get notified. When your claims get processed by the automatic processor, you'll get notified. Uh, when a new user gets added, you'll get notified. So here we can see that there was one claim successfully recorded. And so this builds up into a notification screen, you, you see a stream you can go back to. Um, and if you, if I dig into this a bit more, some of these here. Uh, one of these somewhere has got some um, that weren't successfully processed. Um, oh, there, here we go. So here we've got some saying, oh, you sent some claims in, by the way, but, and one of them was processed, but the other one had a problem. Um, and helpfully, the notification stream has actually put an Excel spreadsheet in the notifications to say it was this one. So if I, if I open that, it'll show me, in fact, why don't I do that? This is going very off-piste at this point, by the way. This wasn't my plan originally, but. Oh, how do I get back? Oh, hang on, you're opening up the Excel. Okay. I might need Tobias to help me again in a moment, but we'll see. Okay, good. So here is a, here's a template from my purchases. The template is uniquely keyed to the online claims platform account, so every account has its own template so that we can validate that the claim is coming in from the right place. Uh, and we can see that we made a claim. Uh, we specifically test here, you see in the test data, I don't know if you can see that, it says invalid countries. So we, instead of typing in a valid country of harvest, we typed in some junk. And you can see that helpfully the system has highlighted that. And then it said in the, in the, over here, it said actually that country of origin is not on the certificate. In fact, it's not anywhere because it's not a country. Um, so there you go. So, so you can see that, the, that we're, we're validating that kind of information as we go through. Okay. Tobias, how do I get back to my existing bracket? Can I just open Firefox again or do I not want to do that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's notifications. Uh, I'm logged into this account called Roughwood Limited. There are some, uh, some people will find that they are putting in data on behalf of more than one certificate holder. So people who are managing group certs um, or people who are providing data entry services on behalf of people. So we see this a lot in other parts of the world where there are sort of bureau services that do data entry for people. Um, and so I can, I can hop between the accounts. I'm currently logged in as this account called Roughwood, but I could hop into, into, into panel distributor company if I wanted to. And clearly, I can get some help. At the moment, there isn't much help there, but there will be. There'll be a full FAQs, searchable FAQs, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the other thing you can do in the help is we've wired this up to a fully automated, well-known, internationally used ticketing system. I don't know if people are familiar with support tickets, but this is one of the things that most online systems use nowadays. Uh, you know, in very small systems, you can put in telephone numbers and get people to talk to someone. And isn't that lovely when that happens? Um, and then you get to slightly bigger systems, and you get to ticketing, and then you get to Google, and you can't do anything at all. Uh, has anyone ever tried to send a ticket to Google? You can do it, but it takes about 10 minutes to find where to get to. But So the idea here is that anyone who's got stuck can just ask a question and there will be people all over the world through the FSC network um, in the national offices who will be able to respond to. And increasingly as those questions get more and more familiar, they'll turn into frequently asked questions and we can just point people at the, at the FAQs. Okay. So far so good. So. Uh, one of the first things, as Phil was just saying, we need to be able to register. I didn't show you the registration piece because I just wanted to be able to log in. Uh, but one of the things that we do want to be able to do is to connect. So you'll see there's a tab here called Supply Chain. 
Uh, and this is where I get to build out my supply chain, connect to my suppliers, and where my customers will connect to me. So bearing in mind, keep, keep this in mind, the only thing you have to do in the OCP is to connect your suppliers and record information about the stuff you received from your suppliers that was FSC certified. So it has nothing to do with putting in stuff that went to your customers. Your customers will do that because you're a supplier to them. So what I want to do here is to connect to a supplier. Now, as I said, this isn't connected to the info.fsc.org, so I'm going to, we've made up some certs, so I'm going to connect to this made up certificate. You'll see that it takes the form of an, it looks a bit like an FSC certificate, but it has the HF characters at the front of it. So I type in the certificate number of my supplier, and I click search, and it goes off and it searches clearly in the real world. This would search info.fsc.org for that certificate number and it would pull it back and it would say, did you mean Astronomic Wood Limited? And I say, absolutely, I did mean Astronomic Wood Limited. And I can click on the I button here and this will show me the details of the certificate as currently stored at info.fsc.org. And I can see the start date and the end date and I can see that it's valid and I can see the license code and I can see what it's certified for and the species and the product types and all of that kind of good stuff, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'd like to connect to them, please, because they're a supplier of mine. Clearly, we need a handshake around this. We need the supplier to say, yes, I am a supplier to Roughwood Limited. Um, oh, hang on. I think I may have already issued this connection request to when I think when I was testing this earlier so that's why it won't let me press the connect button um, but what you'd actually do is press connect and then it brings up a dialog box that says that allows you to type in to say dear supplier I'm Tim you know me well because I'm a customer of yours I'd like to connect to you okay so if I look in my pending connections oh yes here we go there's my outgoing connection request going to astronomic wood in Poland limited and I'm waiting for them to get back to me so I could, if I wanted to, I could log into Astronomic Wood, if I could remember how to do that, and then log in and, and accept the connection request and show you how that moves into a, into a confirmed connection request. The advantage of all of this is really very substantial, and that is that uh, one of the jobs that you have to do as a certificate holder is maintain a list of verified suppliers, FSC suppliers. Clearly, the OCP will do that for you now. Um, as you get a new one or as you get rid of one, you can manage those connections, so you'll always have an up-to-date list. But the other thing that's really important then is that as soon as we get, because it's now uh, an internet platform, as soon as any of those certificates change, if a scope changes, if a species is added, if they get suspended, if they, you know, any of those things happen, uh, then you can get notified. So instead of having to try and remember to check, or, and, and we know that this happens, we know that, you know, scope can change and yet product is still flowing, um, and people check on a, infrequent basis or you know as regular as they feel it's necessary we can now be very proactive and pass that information through so we expect at some point in the future not to need uh, to be able to remove that requirement from people to continuously check to make sure that their suppliers certificates are valid because the system will keep you notified and updated okay still with me still awake hopefully so now what I'm going to do is to do exactly what I said and I'm going to make a claim I'm going to make a claim against one of the suppliers that I do have so I'm on this record claim screen, and you can see I can do bulk processing. We may change the look of this screen a bit, or not. Probably will. So now I can come down and I can, I can raise a claim, I can enter an invoice claim based on the invoice that I received from any of the suppliers that I'm connected to. So I'm gonna pick Logs R Us. You can imagine the developers that made up the test data. I noticed that all the users are uh, scientists of very description. Galileo Galileo, I was logged into the other day. I was logged in as the other day. So, that's, so the transaction identifier, we've called it transaction identifier because it's uh, typically it will be the invoice number, uh, but it doesn't always have to be the invoice number. What it has to be is something that your supplier will recognize because your supplier is going to get a copy of the record. When I enter this and say, I got 300 cubic meters of timber from Roughwood Limited, uh, Logs R Us Limited, then someone at Logs R Us Limited is going to get notified of the fact that Tim just entered some data that said he got 300 cubic meters of stuff from them. And that's really important to keep in mind because what I'm doing here is building up my inputs for my mass balance. At the same time, by doing so, I'm building up the outputs for Logs R Us. And all of their other customers will be saying, oh, I got this from you guys and I got this from you guys. So they'll end up with all of their outputs in there so they'll have a volume of, of total outputs that are going out. 
So let's call this October 2013. So the other thing we can do is very clear. So long as I've communicated with Logs R Us that I'm not going to enter every invoice because I buy the same stuff from you every day uh, and I get pallets of it delivered or uh, truckloads of it delivered and it's the same product and it's the same uh, product type. It's all W1. Um, I'm going to consolidate all of those into once a month. So we've agreed that we can, with the, with the FSE, that they can be consolidated at once a month level. So if you're buying the same stuff from the same suppliers, you could literally be doing this once a month, just at the end of the month saying, okay, this is what I got. My October deliveries with this. <coughs> so now I'm gonna say it's today, I'm making, it's uh, FSC 100%. These are the species that Logs R Us have listed on their invoice, so I can only pick the species from there. I actually can, if I wish to, I can pick species from, uh, from further down. If I come down here, I can say, well, actually, I need to pick a species that's not on their invoice, that's not on their certificate. Why? Because we know that in real life that happens, because sometimes their scope has changed, but their data hasn't been updated, or there's, there's various reasons why that might be the case. But you will get notified um, if, if someone's making a claim about a species that isn't on the certificate. So now I pick the species. Clearly, it might be more than one, so I can pick as many of these as there are. Logs are us are in China, country of harvest is China. I can have multiple countries of harvest. Um, this is information on the invoice, by the way. So you'll only get asked about species and country of origin if you are entering a claim against a certificate that is a forest management certificate or a controlled wood certificate or has, a, has scope for introducing controlled wood because those people, according to the standard, need to know the country of origin and the species of the timber that they're supplying you. Elsewhere in the supply chain, that information isn't known and so the online claims platform wouldn't ask for it. It's rough wood. I can put a description in here of whatever it is that I want. And I'm going to say 300. And then we have a number of different units. We can add more units if we want to. Um, so I've got 300 cubic meters. And now I submit the claim. Oh, oh dear. That's not supposed to happen. OK. So now if I look at my pending claims. I can see the claims that are pending against people that haven't accepted them yet. I can see the ones that have been auto accepted by the system. Um, I can see the claims equally. I can start looking at sales claims. So when I've got my customers saying, oh, I got this stuff from Rough Wood Limited, you sold me this planed timber or you know, cut sawn timber, then they'll be putting their claims in and I'll be seeing those coming in and I can review those. So uh, the only other thing I need to do very quickly is to show you that you don't have to type it in. So if I upload, so here I've got a spreadsheet called Roughwood SSP claim. And the file's been uploaded. You can see I've got a notification to say, oh. but I think it's just told me that I didn't fill in the claim properly and I haven't got the right um, permissions to raise claims. But anyway, here you can see the claims as they go through. So we've got who was the supplier, that we, what's the claim date, what was the transaction ID, what was the claim type, what was the product type, what was the description, what was the quantity, and we can drill into that, we can download reports about it. So if I go to the reporting tools now, I can get a volume summary. I can get a volume summary between certain dates, um, or I can just get a volume summary in general. So the volume summary will allow me to see, and let's see if I can make this a bit bigger. And if you guys can see that very well. But down the bottom here, I've got a list of my suppliers. So this is my, value, this is my, my verified supplier list, um, including their current certificate status and when I first connected to them and when their certificate was issued. Here is my volume summary that tells me how much product by product type I received by units from each of those connected uh, suppliers. Here's the total volumes just summarized by product type, so how much I got by, it's, there's quite a lot of junk data in here because it's all test data, so ignore that. Um, but you get the general idea. So here's, this is, this is working, but it's pulled all of those claims out of that account that I just uh, showed you and has summarized them by who they came from and what product type they were. So this is now summarizing volumes by, you can see that we've uh, booked 917,000 cubic meters from Logs R Us. 
and here's what the, pro the, the, my suppliers are capable of shipping to me, here's who my validated customers are, this is how much stuff I've shipped to my customers, how much they say that they have received from me. Um, so you can see that this should be a very substantial help for people in maintaining their volume summaries. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to say. So I'm going to uh, hand over to Jacob and to Chris, who have both had a go at using this, um, and so they're along just to talk a little bit about their experience of, of it and what feedback they've had from others and so on and so forth. Okay. Back, by the way. Hi, everyone. <laughs> ah, great. Thanks. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Jakob Rüding, and I'm working with the Danish NGO Forest of the World. Um, and amongst many other things, we uh, manage uh, development projects in Latin America. And the reason why I've been brought on uh, is to give the perspective of the very small forest owners in the tropics. Um, because as, as part of our projects, we work with uh, small forest owners in uh, Honduras, Nicaragua, Bolivia, and, uh, and Panama. Um, and the case I'm, I'm going to present for you now is, uh, in, is from Honduras. Um, so this is basically a map of the, the forest cover in, in Honduras. And we work on the, the north coast of Honduras, which is all broadly forest. Um, and we, we work in the buffer zones of protected areas um, with the community forestry groups. And well, because of the deforestation in Honduras, the forest areas we work in are also in the, in the mountains, because those are the areas that are still, uh, where, where forest is still standing. Uh, so those are actually the, the, the areas we can work in. Um, we work with the uh, community forestry groups, and one of those is uh, Coatlal, uh, who is managing a group certificate of consisting of uh, 20 members uh, and managing a total of uh, 22,000 22, hectares of, of forest. Um, and well, they are all based in, in local villages, and their forests are located way up in the mountains. So, as part of their forest management, they, they actually need to to walk into the mountains for, for one to three hours to, to just get to the forest. So as a consequence of this, harvesting is also, it, it's only possible to, to do it by, by chainsaw because there's no access for, for trucks or, or heavy machinery. Um, so harvesting is done by chainsaw and the wood is cut into blocks in, in, in the forest. Um, and it's, it's a very extensive uh, type of, of, uh, of, of harvesting. They harvest just one to three trees per hectare in a 30 year rotation cycle meaning that in, uh, they go into one area and harvest and, and they don't return to that same area until 30 years later, so it's, it's very extensive. And also when they have to extract it, it's done manually and uh, using mules to, to carry the wood down to the village. And from there the wood is transported, uh, usually by truck, to a local sawmill, which is operated by, by the, uh, by the uh, cooperative. And in this sawmill they have uh, drying facilities, and machinery to, to dimension the wood and, and to produce finished products. So they produce everything from cutting boards to doors and garden furniture. So because we, we work with the, these small forest owners in the tropics, when it was announced that the OCP was, was going to be introduced, of course we have the, the concern that when our partners who are certified need to introduce this system, um, this could actually be an extra layer of bureaucracy that they have to comply with in order to be FSC certified, and this could be a real challenge for them. So early on, we, we contacted Phil and, and Emily and, and let them know that we would like to be a part of the development of the system and, and testing the system in order to, order to make sure that this would not be an extra burden for, for our partners. Um, and one of the, the huge challenges we, we were facing is that well, needless to say, it's, it's kind of difficult to implement an internet-based system in an area where people don't have access to the internet. So, so this was kind of our, our big concern, how to, how to make this work. Um, the setting we're working is, is kind of like this, that we have these 20 forestry groups providing 
timber for the, for the uh, local workshop, and this local workshop then sells well both to international companies and also to, to national companies. Um, so our big concern is that how do we get these forest owners to upload data to, to the system? Um, but the solution that, that was, was found was that I could just to, to turn it around so the small forest owners don't need to upload data to the system. The workshop has internet access, so they can actually just put the data into the system. And currently, the data they, they need to, to enter into the system, they already enter that into Excel sheets. Um, so, so that part is actually not, not a big deal for them. Um, but if they enter the data into the OCP system, usually the forest owners will then have to, to verify the data in the system. But in, in this case, the, the system will automatically just approve the, the data they've entered. And when the, when the CV then audits the, the forestry groups, well, then can, they can then verify that the data in the system match the uh, housing permits of, of the forest groups and the, uh, the sales documents of, of the forest groups. And likewise, when the workshop is, is audited, well, you can verify that the, uh, the invoices of, of the workshop match what is in the OSP system. So with this solution, it's actually uh, not that big of a problem as, as we thought to, to implement the system. And, and um, as, as long as the system is in Spanish, which is it, it is, uh, as long as, as the FSC is able to provide some, some type of, of uh, training when, when they need to, to, uh, to start using the system for real, and as long as it's pretty intuitive to use, we, we actually don't see the, the big problems in, in impl implementing the system. Um, and as a benefit for, for uh, Coatlel, um, under the COC standards today, they need to come up with an, an, a, a volume summary of, of all, everything they've, they've sold. And if the OCP system can, can give them that, it's, it's actually easy for them to, to, uh, to use the system. So for us, it's actually not, not the, uh, a big, such a big problem to implement it. No. Okay, uh, I don't know if this microphone is working, so maybe Jonas, if I could... Yeah, you can. Borrow yours. It is working? Oh, good. Okay. Um, good morning, my name is Chris Cox. I work for a company called Tim Met, based in Oxford in England. And we have the uh, uh, good fortune or misfortune, depending on which way you look at it, to be situated about 20 miles away from where Tim and Historic Futures offices are. So uh, we were an obvious choice for being a guinea pig for, uh, for the OCP. Uh, we're quite a large uh, uh, company, a timber importing company. We import from all over the world uh, into our, our warehouses uh, near Oxford and we distribute to customers all over the, all over the UK. Uh, we have um, we probably make something in the region of 20 to 30,000 purchases of individual product lines uh, you know, on a yearly basis. So we're sort of medium to large size uh, transactors, um, of which uh, around about 75% are certified in some way, and certainly well over 50% of those are FSE certified. So we have a number pretty large number of transactions that we would need to uh, upload onto the OCP system. So for us, it was obviously a, we're obviously interested in making sure that that doesn't impose a, a, a burden on us uh, when, we, when we actually start engaging with that system. So I can, I can report that we have tried this, the, the alpha version of the system. Um, we haven't uh, uh, sort of attacked it in, in, in anger on a regular basis, so this is just with trial data, obviously. <clears throat> uh, and, and what I can say is, it's, is, is basically so far so good. Uh, there are three uh, ways of entering the data into the system uh, that Phil may, may have mentioned, ranging from the very simple manual entry uh, on an individual basis, um, which would not be appropriate for us because there would be simply too many transactions to enter manually. Uh, there's the medium size option, which is uploading the data into uh, the, on, in a previously prepared spreadsheet. And I'll talk a bit more about that in, in a moment. That's the option that I think we would probably end up using. Uh, uh, I've tried that. That also works pretty well. Uh, and then there is the more kind of high-tech uh, option for very large volume transactors who would want to automate this process as much as possible 
using a, a, a little nugget of software called an API, an application programming interface, which is pretty techy, but it, it actually works very well. I've also tried that, um, putting data into it, where this little bit of software fires off the thing to the, to the internet, gets the response back, and it's all recorded internally into, uh, into whatever IT systems the companies might have. And I think that would probably be an appropriate solution for the very large users who want to automate their uh, interactions with the OCP as, as, as much as possible. Now, producing the spreadsheet to upload um, was actually a pretty straightforward process, and I suspect it will turn out to be a very straightforward process for anybody wanting to use this uh, system, largely because it's, it's it's, it's dealing with data that any company um, and any commercial enterprise will almost certainly have already organized in, in, in a similar form somewhere in their systems. I, mean, I can't imagine there would be any trading company that somewhere in its systems these days doesn't have a list of its purchases um, organized in a, in a, in a reasonably um, uh, logical way including a supplier code, including a product code or a product description, and including something about the quantity of what they're buying. This would be basic standard commercial data that I think all companies um, uh, would have. Certainly our company had that data organized in a, in a, in a reasonably uh, logical way. We also already had lists of uh, certificate holders of companies that we buy from and their, and their codes, their, their chain of custody codes. We are already required to have that data in an organized way as part of our chain of custody obligation, so this was nothing new. We also already had uh, a list of our certified products and the, and the FSC product types um, uh, that those products belong to. Again, this was something we were required to have in order to be able to produce volume summaries. So this was nothing new. So the only new thing that we needed to, to do to, to, to make the system work was to tie these uh, lists together and produce a spreadsheet of our, of, our, of our purchases in a particular area. And having done that, I can report that, for us at least, the uh, process of uploading this into the system was was very very straightforward um, that's that is not to say that the software itself uh, couldn't be improved that the interface couldn't be made more even more intuitive than it already is and part of what I'm uh, uh, working with historic futures to do is to play the role of the end user from hell if you like and really criticize the hell out of this bit of software and really point out anything that isn't intuitive, easy to use, uh, and, and work absolutely as planned. I think m most of us here, and I think, certainly think most companies will have increasingly um, experience with using the internet and with, with very, very well designed websites. Most of us at some point uh, use the internet to buy things and we are confronted with amazingly well-designed software that cuts through our resistance to, to buy stuff like a hot knife through butter. You know, it makes it so easy to, to, to work these sites, and this is, the, this is the bar that is now out there in terms of, of well-designed websites. And certainly, you know, the OCP platform should aspire to be as easy and as intuitive and as, and as, and as comfortable to use as that and in the testing process that um, we'll be working uh, in the next um, year or so, um, I, I hope that we can make the interface even better, the process even easier uh, to use. Now, my, my concerns are, uh, going forward, that um, you know, we have a relatively large number of transactions we will be uploading. As I said, we have a, something in the region of 150 suppliers uh, who have uh, FSC chain of custody from whom we could potentially be buying products from. So um, it's, it, it, it's a, it is a medium-sized operation, um, medium to large. And certainly my concerns would be that if 
the transactions that we upload generate a huge amount of, uh, of, of messages, stroke error messages, that turn out to be not real, uh, you know, significant errors, but sort of little niggly scope issues, whatever. There is the potential, I think, for those error messages to, 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 to drown out the real uh, problems that the system is designed to, to uncover. So I think, certainly think, I hope that, that in the fullness of time, that the, that the feedback we get from the system is going to be limited um, and that the real errors uh, have, a, have a way of, of, of jumping out at us so that we don't get drowned in, 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 in message chatter because I think that is also, that would be a concern um, if, if we end up having to wade through huge amounts of messages to try and work out what's going on. That will be a resource issue um, and I think people are, are concerned about using this platform becoming a resource issue that is a legitimate concern um, i'm i'm very encouraged by the fact that the rollout of the program has been split into two phases one of which is to is to spend maybe up to a year really cleaning up the the, the baseline data uh, already on the fsc certificate database and we know that there are there are many gaps or holes or inconsistencies or inaccuracies in that database um, I think it's very proper that we spend a significant amount of time cleaning up that data first before we then use that database to underpin the uh, validity of all the other claims that are then added on top of that. I'm hoping that once that exercise is done thoroughly, uh, that the uh, amount of errors, messages that the system will generate back Will be, will be the real errors that we really do need to look into and not clog up our inboxes with lots of, uh, lots of chatter that actually isn't that, uh, isn't that significant. So going forward, as, as far as we're concerned, our company, and, and I stress that we buy mostly timber and timber products. I have no experience whatsoever in the paper and pulp sector, so I cannot answer or make any comment on their, uh, on their industries and, and, and the way they need to operate the system. This may be totally different, and my experience in my company may not be relevant to them uh, in, in, in any shape or form. Having said that, I don't doubt, and I'm pretty convinced, that the essential core uh, commercial transactions of any company um, that We'll, we'll, we will share with companies involving pulp and paper. You know, we will all effectively be buying, buying a product, transforming it or adding value in some way and then selling that product on. We, we all do that in our, in our businesses and we will all, when we make purchases of certified products, effectively be having a relationship with our suppliers and we will be paying invoices from those suppliers. And all the system is asking us to do is to report on the invoices that we get from our suppliers. And all of us, I think, whether involved in the timber, solid timber sector or the pulp and paper sector, will have that sort of model at the core of our, of our businesses. And in that respect, I don't think we need to have anything um, to fear from this process. Um, there are certainly aspects of it already that I can see will save us some time, certainly wading through and checking 150 certificates on the, on the FSC database twice a year is a, is a bore, it's a chore that we have to do for chain of custody already. So if I can avoid that part of the chain of custody obligation, that saves me a bit of time. I'm perfectly happy to reinvest that time in uploading spreadsheets from time to time on a monthly basis. That seems to me to be an investment well worth making. And if that's an insurance policy to ensure that the whole FSC system, chain of custody system, keeps its integrity high, then I think that's an insurance premium uh, that's probably going to be worth paying. Thanks. Thank you all. Um, don't want to keep you from your ice cream, but uh, <coughs> questions to the panel on OCP. Uh, we have one on the Twitter wall which says, what is the explanation of the problem that it's designed to fix? Phil, is that one for you? 
Yeah, I, the, the problem that it's designed to fix is um, the FSC chain of custody system is very good at looking at uh, what we would call t internal traceability, looking at what's going on in that organization. But it doesn't look, it doesn't do a very good job of looking at what's being traded between organizations. We have certification bodies that go and do an uh, audit of an organization. Another certification body does the audit of the supplier, and a, another one does the audit of the customer. And what the problem is, is that there's v v it's very, very difficult for our system to catch if uh, either accidentally or on purpose that supplier passes on an uh, inv inaccurate product claim. Uh, if they forget to say, if they send, they send something that they can send an invoice that says FSC, um, you receive that, you say, yep, they're, they're a certified organization, it says it's FSC certified, you entered into your material accounting record, your volume summary, but your supplier then doesn't enter it into her, her, their system. So when an audit takes place, that is not, that would it'd be very, very difficult to, ca to catch. What this does is then stops that happening. Also, when, for what Chris was saying, is as certificate holders, you have to check the scope of your suppliers twice a year, periodically. Um, what happens in, if something happens within that, uh, that half year, the, your supplier uh, it loses their certification status, but they continue to trade with you and send you material with an FSC claim, or that assumption is made. You will not catch that inaccurate claims gets into the system. So this is a way, again, because it will be, you will be informed pretty much in real time if that certification status changes, you will be able to catch that. You won't have months going by where you don't know that might have have occurred. So those are the two areas that, that we're looking at. Thanks uh, very much. Thanks, Phil. So, gentlemen, just there, put your hand up. Thank you. Neil Burns, Mondi. Um, yeah, I mean, to pick up on Andrew's point, I mean, there's a lot about the how, there's not so much about the why, and I think we also need to touch on the process. Now, it's maybe you haven't done a good enough selling job out there, but I think it would be wrong sitting in this meeting amongst us, uh, the converted, the guys who are singing want uh, certification to think that this is a smooth process and there won't be a reaction. And I think it would be a disservice not to discuss that. Um, from a process point of view, uh, if I look in terms of certification, in terms of we talk about risk-based, we talk about cost-effective, you haven't convinced people yet of the size of the problem and why we're doing it. I mean, you may know it, but I just say to you, you haven't convinced people. And two, in terms of cost effectiveness, again, you haven't convinced people. So, I mean, there's a big reaction outside this room to it that we need to address. Um, I think delaying it by one year has helped the process because as always, when you get close to a deadline, it focuses everyone's mind. So. I just want to flag it's not as, it, it might be a great system. The how, how you do it could be the best system in the world, but the why hasn't been explained. I mean, there's a lot more work needs to be done by FSC. Otherwise, you're going to get a big negative reaction to it, even if it's a great system. No, and, and we have heard that loud and clear. And again, we are committed to that, committed to, to listening and working with our partners, working with our certificate holders to get a better understanding, communicate what, where the issues are to make sure that that's understood, why this is being implemented, and, and the, the importance of having, uh, having uh, a, the FSC, which is a truth mark, that that's absolutely truthful and, and the need, need for, for this system. Thanks, Judy. Well, I think from a Greenpeace perspective and a consumer perspective, um, most consumers, I think there's a trend for traceability and knowing where products come from, and that's a growing trend. I think that uh, the fact that FSC has a chain of custody system is great, but really, ultimately, we would love to be able to say this product has been sourced from this forest. We know that that's not the case, that so we, can't, we can't do that with this system yet. But the more traceability and more security we have with the chain of custody, custody system, it'll just make the label more robust, more credible, 
Um, and I think this is something that consumers are going to expect. And, and we know of cases of fraudulent claims. We know that there, it's going on in China and other places. So there have been cases where fraud I in the system exists. Thanks, Judy. Sir? Don't disagree with anything you say, but if we don't get the process right, if we don't engage the people up front, if we don't convince people while we're doing it, we won't achieve what we want to achieve. Thanks for that. Uh, lady there. Hi, uh, I'm Frida, Frida van der Veen. Uh, I have consultancy in uh, certification, so I, I handle a lot of certification issues. And I was actually wondering how this system will address the fact, for example, if you have a window frame factory, they purchase uh, wood for windows, for the frames, for the glass slats, for the towels, and they only registered the input, but how do you address uh, to determine the end claim for their customer? Tim, I think. Tim. So uh, I think I was struggling slightly to hear, but I think you were saying a window frame company, they buy lots of timber, they make lots of different types of products, they're only going to be required to record their inputs. How do you deal with the outputs? Um, the answer is their customers deal with the outputs. Now, their customers may not be certified, in which case those outputs won't get recorded. Having said that, we are looking at and we do expect to be able to use the online claims platform increasingly effectively for non-certificate holders um, because we know a lot of non-certificate holders actually want to know more about the certification status of the product that they're buying. They don't have to be certificate holders, they just want to buy certified materials, a certified finished product rather. Um, in which case they will be able to, you know, well, we, we expect in the future to be able to allow them to be able to use the tool to say, I bought these window frames and the supplier said that they were FSC certified and so that will build up those outputs. But where they're selling to a certified, to an FSC certificate holder, then clearly that certificate holder will be using those inputs and will, um, you need to record them. So that could be a, a you know, a lead certified building project or, or whatever. Yeah, but nowadays it's in the standard that the claim should be determined by the certificate holder and not by the client. So does it mean that you uh, actually forward determining the claim to the customer? That could be it. Couldn't be it. Uh, sorry, did, did you understand? I'm not, I'm not sure I really understood the question. Yeah, because um, nowadays in, uh, in the standard it's that customers or certificate holders, they need to determine the claim of their product and they're selling window frames continually or totally finished. But they purchase separate claims from their customer. From one customer, they, uh, they purchase the, win uh, the wood for the windows for, from the other uh, client, uh, sorry, supplier. They um, purchase the, wi uh, the wood from, uh, for, for the frames or for the glass slats or for the towels maybe. That can all be different suppliers which all deliver different FSC claims. But still they need to determine the lowest claim when it's a transfer system for example. Um, but who's going to do that in this system now? Uh, the, it's the a little bit technical, I know, but... The information that, that needs to go into the online claims platform is the information on the invoice from the supplier. Yeah, exactly. So there is no requirement for them to record any information about how that timber was used to make windows. No, but how the can OCP. the customer make the right claim? There is still a requirement right to do it in their volume summary reporting for the standard. Yeah, that is an, another question which I have, because I've got several questions, actually. Um, the reason that I ask is in the Netherlands we have a lot of contractors and the contractors they are actually asked by for example the government to supply a list with all finished products that they have delivered to uh, or FSC certified which means that they don't uh, explain to the go uh, or they don't communicate to, to the government that they have purchased timber but they've or, or sold timber they sold window frames completely finished or they sold a completely finished um, cabin or, or something like this. So actually, it's all, uh, it registers the input of all the material, but it doesn't register anything of the output, although there is a gap in this. So, uh, I mean, in that case of the contractors, and, and this obviously situation will vary, but I'm assuming that the contractor isn't certified. It, he is. Oh, right, okay. Well, so he will be paying an invoice to the window supplier to say, I bought these certified windows. 
from the window supplier, and that information will need to go into the online claims platform. Yeah, but then again, then you come back to the window frame factory. Um, he only entered, uh, I purchased window, uh, wood for windows, uh, and I, I purchased towels, and I purchased glass slats with different claims. But the contractor wants to know what the final claim of the window frame as a whole. Which will be on the invoice that he gets from the window frame supplier. Yeah, they will, until that part. But then the government, they want to know, okay, I got this building, you know, um, I need to have an overview of all the different uh, window frames, um, building materials, prefab, uh, articles, what they supply, got supplied from, from all the other suppliers they have. So they need to have an, an outcome as well. So that may be one of those examples that, we, uh, that we're working on as a project team to try and figure out how you could then use the same tools so that the, either the contractor can supply that information through the OCP to the government organisation um, so that there would be a connection made in the other direction to say, and I sent this to my customer. It's already possible for that to happen. It's already possible for a supplier to put the information in to say, I'm sending this to you, or this was, you know, to enter the invoice information on behalf of the customer. Um, but we would, in order for that to work in the way that I think you're talking about, we would need the government entity to have some reference number that say you know, that exists inside the online claims platform, and that's a bit that's not there today because they're not they don't have a certificate, so we don't ha no, we have, there's no way of representing them inside the online claims platform. But but that's part of the plan is to actually have uh, the ability to have a subscription service for those non what we call non certificate holders. It's the ones that are trading um, that are trading what we call finished label products, which don't require chain of custody. So can we develop a, a service for them where they get that information? And, and again, provide a service to the certificate holders because they will be able to provide what their customers are asking for. And it's sometimes difficult to, to provide. And this would be a very simple way uh, of getting that information. Can I, I'm, I'm trying to take care of you yeah. and your timetable as well. Is, is this the kind of conversation that could occur Offline. Yeah. 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 Well, I just wanted to agree with the fact that there is still a gap <laughs> at the end of the chain of custody. So, Thanks thank you. That. I'll take one more question down here. Where are you? There you are. Andy. Um, then we'll get to ice cream. Sorry. Yeah. Is that on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, I'm between you and ice cream. Just one more question. It's Andrew Hill from UPM again. Can you explain? Uh, the timetable for reviewing the chain of custody standard to include OCP, how, how, how the standard will be re revised? Well, it, my understanding is that at, at this point, the standard is being revised, is, is being drafted as we speak, and the uh, working group uh, agreed to include the OCP in, in the uh, revised chain of custody um, draft standard. But, uh, um, that's, that's where it stands. I'm not sure when that draft standard will be released for public consultation. Um, but I think Occam Dross, you can talk to Occam Dross and, and get that information. I, I'm happy to, to find that information out as well. Thank you. Thanks. Um